Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to round eight coverage of the U.S. Chess Championships taking place in St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, for round eight, uh, I thought a lot, most of the uh, interesting action took place on the women's side, so we'll focus on that one today. Uh, one interesting point about the uh, round eight was that there were um, three of the six games uh, involved a French defense, so a great uh, treat for fans of the French defense. And uh, so I wanted to take a look at one of those games. So with the white pieces, we have uh, Ashritha Eswaran, and uh, she's one of the youngsters, a uh, newcomer to the tournament. And then her opponent, Anna Zitonsk. Anna Zitonsky, she's one of the uh, favorites, uh, one of the top two uh, women players in the U.S. and uh, a former champion, uh, several time winner of the U.S. championship. So uh, Let's uh, kick off this game. Anna, I mean, Ashritha starts off with e4. Anna plays e6, the French defense. d4, d5, knight d2, the Tarash. The Tarash variation against the French. And um, there's a couple replies here that um, Black has. Black can go knight f6, and this uh, often uh, causes this pawn to come forward, and the knight hops around here, and we get a very typical French structure with the uh, closed center. But there's another way to play the uh, against the Tarash with the um, black pieces. And actually, this is the way I, I've been playing, is uh, I play c5. And this allows, um, this allows white to give black the isolated queen's pawn. But it seems like it's an OK um, isolated queen's pawn position for black. And we'll see something like this happening in the game. So um, e takes d5 was played. He takes d5. And now knight to f3. I think those moves can be played in either order. Um, knight to c6. And um, d takes c5. So d takes c5 is the first uh, maybe somewhat questionable decision from white. Uh, the normal line continues bishop to b5. Cancel that. Yeah, bishop to b5. And uh, bishop to d6. And now taking. And the point is that uh, this costs black a tempo compared to the game. So what happened in the game was the immediate um, d takes c5, bishop takes c5. And it's possible that Ashritha did this on purpose just to uh, uh, get away from the main lines. But uh, it just gives uh, black a free tempo, and it seems like black is already uh, equalized in this position. Now, I mean, white gets a tempo too as well, so it's not, uh, not entirely a senseless move. Knight b3 kicks the bishop back. And then bishop e2. Another uh, slightly unusual move, the normal place to uh, develop the bishop to would be uh, bishop to d3. So this is kind of a quiet deployment of the bishop. But we're out of the book, and, um, and nothing horrible has happened. It's just that uh, black has been able to equalize. So the game continues, knight f6, and I think a pretty logical play for the next uh, stretch of moves here. As the, the bishops develop, there's bishop to g5, pinning the knight. It's rook to e8, getting the rook on an open file. Um, c3 here. This um, is a, a good move against an isolated queen's pawn, just uh, preventing it from coming forward. So it's part of the strategy black has against the isolated queen's pawn is to restrain it, uh, blockade it, and then destroy it. <laughs> that's, uh, that's the Nimzovich uh, formula. So we see the restraint being applied here. Um, h6, kicking the bishop, and bishop drops back. And now black uh, develops her bishop h3 kicking the bishop and the bishop drops back so all pretty standard now um, <clears throat> white gets a chance to activate this knight knight to d4 and exchange off one of the the pieces so this uh, trade occurs and it could be that um, oh knight knight takes knight takes was played here instead of queen takes queen takes of course not a good move because the rook is there <laughs> um, it could be that uh, you know Ashritha would would have been happy with the draw here. So, you know, she's trying to uh, trade off uh, pieces and get to a position which is uh, solid and holdable um, because she is facing a much stronger player. There's a 200 point rating gap. So, uh, you know, not uh, she's not playing the most challenging moves here, but um, but playing solidly, it shouldn't, shouldn't uh, get her into too much trouble playing like this. So, um, but seeing this, Anna Zatonsky starts playing a little more aggressively here. Um, grabbing some space, first of all, with g5, kicking this bishop back. Bishop drops back to g3, and then knight to e4. So, um, I'm sorry, this knight. This knight comes into e4. 
So uh, white's got a, I mean black. Black has got a very uh, nicely posted knight here, and maybe some weaknesses on the king side. We'll see if Ashritha can exploit this. But uh, well, she gets her knight back to d4. It's a good post for it, and the queen comes to f6. So taking a look at uh, the uh, square in front of the isolated pawns, it's sometimes useful to pile up pressure there and uh, see if uh, some kind of breakthrough can be forced. And also it's just a natural developing move, getting the queen off the back rank. Um, the queen comes to d3, supporting the center and also getting off the back rank. And now, um, and now it's uh, Anna that decides to go for some uh, simplification. Uh, in the long run, this pawn is a weakness, so it's always a temptation if you see a way to uh, to solve that problem uh, to, to just uh, go in for it. But uh, well, the chess engine likes black here and thinks black should not uh, simplify too soon, but just keep playing. Uh, a couple suggestions from the chess engine were moves like uh, rook a to c8, um, pawn to h5, pushing forward on the king side, or um, a6. Just uh, controlling another square here over on the queen side, keeping a not knight from hopping into that square. So just playing on in this position and uh, not going for the exchanges. Um, but, uh, well, like I said, when you have the uh, isolated queen's pawn and you see a way to simplify and, and uh, solve that problem, um, which is eventually going to be an issue in the, in the uh, end game, uh, it's a temptation to go for it. And so she does. Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4. Uh, bishop takes d4, and if queen takes, which was possible, queen takes, um, this is an end game that's favorable to black, and it's probably the position that uh, Anna Zatonsky was heading for. It's just that this knight here is a much better minor piece in this end game than this bishop. And notice the bishop is the same color as the center pawn here, so this bishop's movements are going to be somewhat hampered, uh, and also it can't chase the knight away. Um, the knight can still be chased away by the pawn, although not immediately because this bishop uh, would be lost. And so uh, the, the, problem, uh, the problem piece in this position is the bishop here, and there's no, no great solution. So it seems like, uh, uh, well, black continues with rook a c8, taking away another possible escape route for this bishop. So this bishop is, uh, is a problem piece, and black can play against this and have a pretty good end game here, probably winning for black even though the material is even. So uh, Ashritha uh, spots this idea and takes back with the pawn. And um, actually in this position um, black's uh, advantage has uh, somewhat disappeared. So it's it's pretty much an even position now. So I think uh, Ashritha, if she just wanted to get a, a solid game here and, and not, not lose to the higher rated player, I think she's well on her way to doing that. Rook A to C8 was played here. Now bishop to e5. The bishop has a nice perch here. Queen comes over to b6. Taking a look at the um, the b-pawn. And now um, uh, Ashritha plays a somewhat mysterious move, king to h2. And that seems to get her into trouble. Um, just the simple move b3. Um, you know, defending that uh, pawn. And it seems like... Um, seems like... Uh, <coughs> um, White is okay here. There's nothing horrible going on. Um, actually, I, I spotted the idea with King H2. The idea with King H2 is to be able to play F3 and uh, not have to worry about uh, this pin, this uh, pin along the uh, along the um, this diagonal here would uh, undefend the bishop. So King H2 getting away from the pin is probably the idea. But uh, well, there was still time to play B3. Um, so King H2 was maybe a bit hasty. Um, okay, so but that was played, and uh, so Anna grabs a pawn, and then now F3. That was the idea, just being able to chase the knight away. But uh, F3, it turns out, is a, a big blunder, and uh, there's an amazing uh, tactical move from uh, from Anna Zatonsky here. She spots the idea, and uh, so if you want to uh, uh, pause. Pause the video here and see if you can find the move that Black has in this position. Yeah, Anna found this move. I'm going to give the answer away now. She played the really great move. Rook takes e5, <laughs> and uh, and uh, Black or uh, White White is just in big trouble after this move. Um, so what? Uh, 
Ashritha eventually played in the game was F takes E4, not grabbing the rook, but grabbing the knight. Uh, but then she goes into a, uh, a game where she's just down some pawns and the material is even. So you have to ask yourself, what, what goes wrong if you grab the rook, trying to win the exchange? Uh, in, in exchange for some pawns, you, you could go up the exchange. And uh, if, you can survive, <laughs> if you can survive this position, then you should emerge okay. But it just turns out that this position is not survivable. The follow-up move from black is just bringing the rook into c2, setting up these uh, second rank threats. And um, the, the first point to note is that if you're super greedy and uh, try and grab the knight, you get mated in two or three. Pawn takes knight, then you have rook takes pawn, driving the king to the back rank, rook to h2, check, king goes to g1, and then queen comes to g2, mate. So there's just a simple mate in two waiting for you there. So you can't take the knight. Um, but how about if you defend the pawn? Say rook to g1 defending the pawn. And uh, well, here's a good spot too. Can you, can you find the best move for black in this position? Okay, yeah, I'm going to give the answer away now. Pause the video if you want time to think about it. There is queen takes e5 check here, and this leads to a forced mate. The simplest line is uh, if the king moves, then knight to f2 is mate. Um, black can hold it off for a little bit by playing f4 and queen to g3 and moves like that, but uh, it all results in a mate eventually, with queen coming to g3 and knight to f2 mate. So uh, that is not playable either. The, um, the best line after rook to c2 is actually queen takes c2. And then uh, after this exchange, um, you know, white is giving up the queen in exchange for a rook and a piece. You might think uh, it's possible to save this position. Um, white has a queen and a, and a pawn, I guess, against the two rooks. Let's count the pawns. One, two, three, four, five. One, two three, four, five, six. Yeah, queen and a pawn against the two rooks. But uh, this passed pawn is too strong and uh, black is winning here. So uh, so that wouldn't help either. So if we go back to the game, uh, you just can't take that rook. And, uh, but taking the knight also loses. Uh, F takes e4 was played. Now d takes e4, hitting the queen. So no time to grab the rook. Queen goes to g3 to defend over here against uh, the rook coming to uh, c2. And now I'll just kind of uh, step through the rest of this. Let's see, the rook went to d5, but it's just a winning, um, it's a winning, uh, well, there's still heavy pieces on the board, so it's not an end game, but uh, black is just winning because of the extra pawns. And this pawn is a weak pawn, so I think uh, black is gonna go up two pawns. So let's step through the game, get to the finish. Okay, there's a trade of pawns there, the, the d pawn for the b pawn. Yeah, black does, but after that trade, black is just two pawns up. Um, and there was just nothing uh, Eshritha could do about it to uh, reverse the tide. So after some exchanges, we eventually get into an endgame. Oh, that, that uh, queen going back and forth with the check, that was to reach the time control. We're now to move 40. And then we go into this queen and pawn endgame where uh, black is two pawns up. And of course, uh, Anna wanted a little bit of time to be able to calculate uh, this position before going for it because the uh, with queen still on the board, you always have to be worried about drawing ideas with perpetual checks. So she just wanted to make sure it was safe. So she bought herself a little bit of time, got to the time control, and then uh, went for this position where after a few more moves, right, right here, this, uh, this queen move here, typical way to... Uh, get out of a queen and pawn ending is to uh, is to produce a fork like this and uh, exchange down to a winning king and pawn end game. And uh, after this move, then uh, Ashritha resigned because uh, this outside passed pawn is uh, is just going to win for black. Um, actually, it looks like uh, this this pawn move here prevents prevents white from even coming over and stopping these pawns. So this this uh, <laughs> this. Uh, King is going to be out of play, giving giving Black's king time to come over and and win with these pawns as well. So different ways for for Black to win here. Um, so there was one other game. Uh, I just wanted to show the ending of it. Um, 
And uh, but anyway, I want to say, yeah, nice win for Anna Zatonsky, and she joins the leader with that w leaders with that win. Um, so the next game is uh, Carissa Yip versus Sabina Foyzer, and uh, this was also a French defense. So uh, um, let's let's show this game here. At this point, um, what's been going on? Oh, Queen takes. Um, let's back up here. Wanted to look at this position here. Queen to b5, b4, rook a to d8. And now um, there is... Uh, oh, yeah. This this position is okay. Um, so Carissa Yip with the white pieces has been holding her own here. And it uh, seems like this position is about equal. Uh, white has an extra pawn here, but uh, black has active pieces. And... Uh, so it seems like this is okay for white. But her next move is a mistake. She plays rook a to d1. And uh, so if you want to pause the video here and see if you can figure out the problem with that move and what's the idea that black has here. Okay, um, well, uh, the, it starts with rook takes d1. And so rook takes back. There, there are other ways to take, but they all lead to various problems. And then bishop to b6 is the main idea, setting up this pin on the knight. And uh, it just turns out this pin is a really, really horrible one. It's just no way to get out of it. And um, uh, rook to e1 was tried. And now queen to d3, just piling up on the pinned piece, forcing king to f2. So now all the pieces are involved defending that knight. But now uh, black gets to start mopping up some pawns. Let's see, uh, g4 was played here grabbing another pawn, and then the king dropped back to f1 because when the queen finally uh, stepped away from the pressure on the knight, see in this position the, the queen was still pressuring the knight so the king couldn't move, but now that uh, b4 was played the king can finally move and unpin, and so uh, maybe for a second uh, <laughs> Carissa was breathing a sigh of relief, but there's a killer move here. There's there's multiple winning moves, but there's, there's one killer move here that uh, finishes the game most efficiently. So one more move and then uh, Carissa resigns. So see if you can find the move for black in this position. Okay, I'm going to give the answer away now. Pause the video if you want time to think about it. It's the killer move. Queen takes e1 check and uh, and uh, Carissa just resigned. Of course, the problem is if uh, king takes queen, then rook takes knight check wins the queen. So uh, after queen takes rook, bishop takes. Uh, black is just a piece up in an endgame with an outside pass pawn. And a simple win. So uh, Carissa just resigned at this point and a nice win for Sabina Foyser. So, uh, well, let's take a look at the standings after that. Um, but I did mention there were three. Uh, the French defense featured in three of the games in this round, and all three games ended up being wins for black. So, uh, <laughs> so for fans of the French defense, this was a, a good round. Anyway, with that win, um, Anna Zatonsky joined the leader. She's six out of eight, along with Nazi Paikidzi and Tatev Abrahamian, both of whom are having great tournaments. And Irina Crush is just half a point behind at five and a half. So with, uh, let's see, eight out of 11. Three more rounds to go. Those are the primary contenders, but you can see there's uh, quite a lot of competition for the top slot there still. On the uh, men's side, um, let's see. We have, uh, oh, Hikaru Nakamura won again. So he's got two wins in a row, and it seems like he's making a run for the uh, title, which is nice to see. He was uh, had kind of a slow start, but now after, um, after eight rounds, he's just a half point off the lead. He got two wins in a row, so he's up to five and a half. And the two winners, Wesley Slow and, um, Wesley Slow and Caruana Fabiano at six points. And half point behind, we have Hikaru Nakamura and Ray Robson. So once again, we have uh, four people in good uh, in good spots to contend for the the top uh, position in the uh, in the next three games. So uh, stay tuned, and uh, I will see you soon. Bye.